Film fans of YouTube, hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh, your movie apprentice, and today I look at Studio Ghibli's The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, directed by Isao Takahata in his first outing for the studio since 1999, a good gap of 14 years. Born from Bamboo, the film follows the growing up tale of the princess as she goes from the simple life of the country to the high life of nobility and the social aspects that comes with such an advancement in her social standing. Now the first thing I really have to talk about in this is the use of colour. This is a very My Name is the Yamada's style art style and this film could only work with this sort of art style because the things they do with the colour in this is absolutely outstanding. We go from simple basic colours for the simple lifestyle that are very soft focused lines and for the nobility side of things we get very bold and bright colours really shoving it into our face how glamorous this lifestyle is. The two contrasting aspects are chalk and cheese. They are very much a standout part of this movie. It is by far the best part of the movie where all the colours just drain out, leaving that speck of red running through the fields. It is probably the most gift scene of this movie. You type in the gift bar, this scene pops up and it is by far the best use of the concept of playing with colour that this film showcases. Kaguya herself is an amazing protagonist. She has so many layers about her. She has a very reserved yet playful nature that changes almost on a whim. She is a very good protagonist to follow. We see things from her perspective and through her eyes. We see all the struggles that she has to go through in growing up in this nobility and how society tries to force her into a marriage that she does not want. We see her laughing at the small misfortunes of these so-called suitors. We see her struggle with internal depression while trying to please her parents but also wanting to find her own happiness. She is just a great character. She's got a mischievous side, a wondrous side, but she's also got that reserved side as well. And she has some very powerful moments that are both silent and some powerful moments that are very loud. She is an absolute joy of a character and is probably one of my favourite female protagonists in cinema history after watching this. She is just a class act to watch. The relationship with her family is a strong point as well. Throughout this film, the backbone is held together by the relationship between Kaguya and her mother and father who take her in after she is discovered in that bamboo. They do a very good job of showing the complex relationship between these characters because whilst the father wants what's best for her, there are times he can get a bit overbearing, but you never question that he does truly deeply love her as a daughter and will go out of his way to protect her and do what's best for her. His only problem is that what he believes is best for her is by the social standards that are presented from this time period. And when she confronts him on this, is a powerful line where she straight up gives two scenarios to her father and that line delivery is just heart-wrenching. I won't spoil what that line is, but you have seen this, you'll know exactly what line I am talking about. This film runs in at the two hour mark. I think it's about two hours and 15. I believe it is actually the longest Ghibli film, but this film manages to never overstay its welcome. It plays with the pacing very cleverly. When it wants to speed things up and advance through the plot fast, it will do that, but it will slow down when the plot requires it and when it is essential, when it's important to focus on this period of a life, it will stay and focus on that element. But other areas doesn't overstay the welcome. They will speed through key events that don't bear any significance to the overall arcing story or themes that are in place. I think my only real flaws with this film is that there are a couple of side characters that do feel like Arthur Force. They are hardly in this at all and they do appear on rare occasions to give the princess a little flashback to her old life, but there's very little depth behind these characters. And when you really think about it, these characters are quite strange as well, because the princess, she goes through a rapid growth spurt at the very start, from childhood to adulthood. 
and you have to really question how old is she really. That's just one of those weird nitpicks that I have when thinking about certain dynamics that appear in this movie. The ending itself as well is both heart-wrenching and a little bit sudden. I don't know, I feel like I could have seen a little bit more of this film, maybe a little bit more time with the princess and her parents, just a little bit more time of her as a person, getting to know her more, which is a bit rich for me because we do get to know a lot about her and a lot of the story from her is told through her facial expressions and how she carries herself throughout this film. This film just screams a calling out the patriarchy of what it was like to be a woman back then in that sort of time era and it does a very good job at spelling this. This would be Isao Takata's last film for Ghibli and he has officially retired as of 2018 and as of this recording he is staying retired and I think he definitely went out of a bank here and it is arguably his best. I'll have to go double check my list but it's arguably his best film for the studio. Before I get into my grading, if you like what I do on this channel and got this far, please consider clicking that like button and subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification as we get to the end of this Ghibli series. But let's check this grade out, shall we? So overall, the tale of the princess Kaguya has great art, plays with colours beautifully. The character is brilliant and the pacing will speed up and slow down at appropriate intervals that make sure that this two and a bit hour film never overstays its welcome. Aside from a sudden ending and some very lackluster side characters, there is very little I can say that is wrong with this movie. Overall for me, the tale of the Princess Kaguya is a good cup of tea. So the tale of the Princess Kaguya, have you seen it? If you have, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And again, if you like what we do in this channel, click the like button and subscribe for more movie reviews like this coming all the time. Coming up in a couple of hours, hopefully, will be When Marnie Was There, which is the last of the Studio Ghibli films until Earwig and the Witch, which is just about to come out. So this should be an interesting one. But until next time, my name is Josh, I have been The Movie Apprentice, and I'll see you in the next video.